All right, welcome back everyone to another episode. I guess I'll throw it in my tech reviews, PC build uh, playlist. But today we are going to be reviewing the Logitech G305 gaming mouse, wireless gaming mouse, I should say. So I got to give a shout out to my best friend. He actually picked this up for me uh, for my birthday. So uh, I I'm already using a Logitech wireless mouse. I actually have it over here. So this is the one I'm currently using. And it's pretty nice. Um, it has nice you know, ergonomics to it for my hand, personally. But this one's a lot nicer, and it also goes with my keyboard a little bit better, which I will also be doing a video on fairly shortly. So keep an eye out for that. Subscribe if you are interested in seeing that video as well. But on to what we have in front of us today. So the Logitech G305 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse. So let's take a look at a couple features of this bad boy. They uh, promote light speed, a high performance wireless technology that drive, that drive that delivers speeds even faster than many wired gaming mice. So that's always the debate is uh, between latency of wired mice compared to wireless mice. So it seems like they are trying to promote that this is just as good as a wired mouse. They also are talking about their battery life back here, lasts up to 250 hours, which is pretty nice. It only takes a Double uh, A battery, which does come included in the box. We'll get to the unboxing in just a second here. Also talks about the high efficiency rate op rated optical, so it's the sensor that's used in there to move the mouse mouse around. There's a couple different settings for uh, things on that as well. And then finally, <clears throat> they talk about the portability, the durability, and the comfortability. So, without further ado, let's jump into the unboxing. So let's get this bad boy open, I believe. Yes, I had already opened it. I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was talking about before. So, pretty standard unboxing here. Have the mouse. Which way is this bad boy? Right here. So here we go. Wrapped in this nice foam material. We'll take it out of the packaging here. And as you can see, kind of blends in with my my table here. It's nice and white. Very, very aesthetically pleasing. They do put the blue logos on this one, which is pretty cool. Right there and right there. Let's see what else we got in the box. All right, a little bit of uh, paperwork and uh, just some more paperwork in here. We'll throw that to the side for now. Here is our one AA battery, Duracell, not for resale. We'll set that to the side right over here. And then the other thing, which is kind of cool that they include in here, let's get rid of this, brush some of this junk off my table here. I can get this open, there we go, get rid of that, is a USB extender. So you could plug this into the back of, uh, let's say your PC or I don't know, anything else you might be using it for. And uh, if you use like a docking station or something like that, and you can have the uh, USB adapter be plugged in here at a different port. So let's take a look. I think this is actually pretty long. Oh yeah, they give you a lot of cable here. I know the video doesn't do it justice, but this is actually very nice. A very nice rubberized material. All right, throw this to the side. Cool. So next, we are going to take a look at the mouse itself. This thing is pretty, pretty nice. I'm liking it a lot. If we pop it open just like this, this is how we get to the battery and the wireless dongle. Try to get in here so you guys can see that. There we go. Wireless dongle right there. We can take that out. Now, I don't believe that this is a universal one, though. They do make a universal one, which I actually have right over here. This is the universal one, and it has this little orange emblem on here. 
And so anything that has that little orange emblem, it'll be uh, universally used for. Like any of their products can be used for it that have that, I should say. So I don't think this one is. I'll have to test it, though. Place that to the side for a second. Let's grab our battery. We'll stick her right on in. And we'll close it up. A little blue light comes on here. And yeah, so that is pretty much it for the unboxing and the showing off of it. As you can see, we have two buttons here on the side. Pretty uh, standard nowadays to have these two. Pretty clicky buttons. Sound pretty nice. You have your scroll wheel. Makes a nice, very predominant uh, feel and noise to it. And then obviously that has its wheel click as well. And then you have another button right here in the middle. And from my understanding, this will actually change um, like how sensitive your mouse is. And there's different settings. As you can see, it cycles through colors there a little bit. So your normal is blue, but then this is a white color. It kind of is hard to see on there. But you also have purple, and that's a yellow. White again, there's an orange, and then back to purple. That's yellow, yeah. So you can just cycle through those. I think it's three settings. I'll have to double check on the uh, the info for that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You have your on off button down here. And other than that, you can kind of see how it fits in my hand. I have, you know, pretty decently sized, sized hands. So you can kind of see how it rests. My uh, fingertips do fall off the end a little bit here, but it's not that bad. Let me grab my other mouse that I've been using to show you a quick comparison between the two. So yeah, they're pretty much the same size. This one might be just a tad bit longer, but uh, nothing crazy. This one has a little bit more of a palm rest on the side here, which is nice. And then this one has a few more buttons on it, obviously. And uh, this one, two, three is for linking up to multiple devices. So yeah, we're not reviewing this though. So let me put that to the side. So yeah. Other than that, I think we should hop into the software so you guys can get a better understanding of what capabilities this mouse has when it's being used on your computer and how you can configure it to uh, suit your own personal needs. So let us jump to that. All right, so there's probably gonna be a change in audio here because I'm now using my desktop microphone rather than using what I was before. Um, but now uh, we're jumping into the software, so that's why I'm using a different microphone. So a little bit of discrepancy there, but we're going to continue on the path that we have laid out. So we are now in the software. Um, I will leave a link down below for you all to go and find where you can download this. It is the Logitech G Hub. Um, it is specific for their, their gaming uh, devices. So as you can see, um, their gaming devices all start with a G, that's what the G means. And I have the 305 mouse and then my keyboard is the G413. So like I said earlier in this video, if you are interested in that, uh, let me know because I can do a video on it. I was planning to, um, but if there is uh, much love to wanna have that out sooner, I will prioritize that over other things. So just let me know down below what you guys are thinking. So from here, you can actually choose your different devices. So we're going to jump into our 305 because that is what we have. And as you can see, it pops up with a ton of possibilities for assignment. Now, this mouse does not have um, any RGB capabilities other than those center dots. And those are um, specific to the sensitivity setting, which we will get into in just a second. So your assignments are uh, pretty in depth, like I was saying. So you have your different buttons here, your forward and back buttons on the side, which I showed you earlier, and your primary and secondary clicks, your middle click, as well as the DPI cycle. And that is a whole other, um, whole other field as well. And we will get to that, like I said, in just a second. So running through, you have different commands, different keys, actions, macros, and system things that you can do. And you can search for different things right here as well. There is a ton and they make it super easy for you to find um, what you're looking for. So in terms of commands, 
this is basically hitting windows and then a uh, button as well so like if you wanted to i don't know open window settings typically you would hit the left windows key and i however you don't have to now you could assign this let's say a uh, back button here we're going to assign it this so now every single time you hit the back button it will actually perform that command for you now we're just going to use the default on that for now, but um, let's run through some of these different ones. So you can bring up a dialog box or a search. There's also, uh, I guess, productivity and editing areas here as well. So if you wanted your back button, like if you're doing a lot of, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, Excel work, and you do a lot of co uh, copy and paste or even cut and pastes, you have that option to put these here. So let's say on the back, we want to have I don't know, paste, and then on the forward button, you want to have copy. So now every single time you hit the forward button, it'll copy whatever you have highlighted, and then every time you hit the back button, it'll paste what's on your clipboard into um, where you have selected it to go. I'm going to put those back to default again. Uh, like I said, there is productivity as well, so you can open the start menu, switch between applications, so that'd be Alt-Tab, which is pretty nice. I actually have that on the mouse that I currently have. Um, which I didn't mention before, but uh, switching over, I did take a look at it more, and I have the M720 uh, wireless mouse. So this is actually a wireless and Bluetooth mouse. I do like it a lot. It has a couple more features compared to what my this mouse has. Um, so very much like the keyboard, I'm actually going to say if you guys want to see a review on the Logitech M720. Uh, leave a like down below. I might put a review out around that as well. I said I wasn't going to, but thinking more on it, it would be pretty cool to see what it has uh, capabilities for because it has more, I would say, productivity capabilities, especially if you use multiple computers. So anyway, back to this mouse. Uh, we ran through some of the commands there. There are keys as well. So this, you literally can just assign any key to it. That's pretty straightforward actions so this is pretty cool um i'm not 100 percent sure what overwolf is i'm guessing it is similar to obs i haven't used it before but they do have like discord capabilities so you could deafen yourself or mute self and then there's also different actions you could add in here so if we had create new one <clears throat> this is all the options you have join voice channel or leave voice channel we're actually going to get out of that. And then the other cool one is OBS. So I'm actually using OBS right now. You can see down here, it's telling me I'm recording. Um, and that's pretty cool. So you could have it set up uh, for hotkeys right here. So if we wanted to toggle recording, toggle, toggle desktop mute, streaming, save buffer, etc., etc., you could easily do that there. And they have clearly a ton of different things. Toggle the microphone would be pretty good as well. Um, but yeah. So a lot of different options there as well. It's interesting though, because it says, please open OBS for this. And I, I do have OBS open. So I don't know why it's telling me that. So anyway, lots of options for those as well. You can jump over into macros as well, which are pretty cool. And you can create your own macro. So let's just put this as test, tester. We'll hit enter. And you have different options of what type you want. So no repeat, repeat while holding, toggle, or sequence. Um, and they give you a little bit of info between, uh, below each one here. So for no repeat, you'll do one time of the macro when you press it, that's it. The repeat while holding is it'll loop continuously while the key is pressed. You have your toggle, which will continuously loop until you toggle it off by pressing it again. So you press it, It'll keep going and going and going and going. Press it again, done. Sequence. Um, press, the play, press to play the macro. Press and hold to repeat while holding section. So it's like you could do a one-off or you could hold it down and it'll continuously run. So it's kind of a uh, an in-between. So let's just do a no repeat here and you can kind of see what options we have. So I wanna click over here with start now. So you can have record keystrokes, text and emoji, an action, launching certain applications, a system, or a delay. 
So I'm not going to go too in depth on all of these since this is just a review around the mouse, but I just wanted to show you the different options you have when setting up a macro. So if we wanted to do, let's say action, um, it, you could go into OBS, let's say, and you could have, I don't know, you know, toggle your microphone mute as well as toggle your recording or, you know, toggle your streaming and your recording at the same time. A lot of different options for there. We could take a different look at it here. If we wanted to do a text, you could do a text, which would be kind of cool. And then uh, there's different system ones. So audio, if you wanted to, I don't know, increase, decrease. You could go into treble and bass, which is pretty cool, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very in-depth. I personally don't use macros a lot. Um, there's also a, a delay between them that you can modify up here. And you can set a color as well, which is kind of cool. But yeah, like I was saying, I don't use a ton of macros. So uh, I'm not going to be setting one up today, but all of them would show up here then. And then you more than likely would be able to sign it to different buttons here. Then finally, you have your system, which is your standard uh, kind of standard commands. A lot of kind of repeats here. You see you have your copy, paste, uh, cut, redo, undo, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can have it launch an application. Uh, cycle your DPI, move it up and down, et cetera, et cetera. Media controls, audio controls, lighting controls, uh, stuff specific to the G Hub, and then um, just some miscellaneous items as well. So, yeah, that is pretty much it for what you can assign to the different buttons. And you can do it for pretty much everything, I believe. Like the middle click, you can change it to be something different as well. Um, obviously, you can do all default. There's also G shift that you can use as well. But like I said, this is not an intensive review on the software itself. This is more so showing what capabilities this specific mice, mouse has within the software. So the next tab you can go down to here is sensitivity, um, other no, otherwise known as DPI. And this is pretty cool. These are the defaults. I have not changed these. And um, it's actually four settings. I thought it was three, but it's actually four. And they are set at different DPI speeds. So you have 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. And obviously it's saying what we're currently at is underlined. So this is 1600. And then you can bump these around to be at whatever one you want. So if you wanted it at 12,000 DPI, you could do that. So um, you, have to, you do have to assign them to your mouse. And if you hit that middle button, like I was showing earlier in the video to switch between those different colors, it should show up here. So it shows up here. And it also, if you saw that down here, it notifies you at the bottom of your screen. You can turn that off if you want to. You do not have to have that on, but it is kind of cool. So let's start at the bottom. We're on 400 right now, and you can see how slow this moves around. So it is, it's quite slow. I'm just going back and forth on my mouse pad here. And we'll bump up to the 800 one. You can see how much faster this one's gonna move around. Jump up to the 16, which is what we were doing before. You know, and this is more along the lines of my speed. This is my personal preference. I actually might bump it up a little bit more. And then finally you have 32, which is just kind of insane. <laughs> like I'm barely moving it on the, the mouse pad here and it's just going all over the place. Now you could change this. Let's say we want to bump it up to uh, 4,000. It's, uh, it's quite hard to use. Now let's just bump it up to 12. This is extremely sensitive. It's, it's quite amazing how um, sensitive they can make these now, but uh, this is a little bit too much for me. So let's bump it back down. Oh, my Lanta. Okay, cool. And I'm actually gonna move this one up a little bit. Uh, a little more, maybe 2000. Yeah, that's more my speed right here, personally. So. It is pretty nice. You can jump through the different ones. Um, I don't believe you can remove these. They are set. 
Mm, there's no additional settings. I'll get to that in just a second. And then this is a uh, report rate per second. Choose how often the mouse reports information to your computer. And uh, they have different settings here. I, I mean, default should be perfectly fine. Again, this is not a super in-depth on the software itself. I'm sure that it's already out there. So I'm just showing you the capabilities of the mouse. And then there's also power modes. So you have high performance mode or low endurance mode. Your performance mode will um, obviously be more, it will perform better, but it'll probably chew up a little bit more battery where your low power mode will be more of an endurance. It'll last a bit, a little bit longer, but with 250 hours um, advertised for this mouse, um, I think you're in no danger of running out of battery life. So let's see what else we have here. The only other thing are these settings up here. And I popped into these just a second ago. This will give you your firmware for the mouse. And then it'll also allow you to use onboard memory mode. You can turn this on um, and it'll use profiles saved in the device, uh, in the device memory. So things will be saved on your mouse rather than um, being saved in the software on the computer. If you are moving your mouse around a lot to computer from, from computer to computer, I should say, and you want those settings saved within the mouse itself rather than what the defaults are. So it's a pretty cool option. But for me, for now, I'm leaving everything pretty standard and stock. I don't have any reason to really switch it up, at least for right now. Um, I have a lot of my defaults set on my or a lot of shortcuts, I should say, set on my keyboard, which I use more often. And um, yeah, we can jump into that another time as well. So that's pretty much it. You do get a battery indicator down here as well on um, what your battery life is looking like for this. So I think that pretty much covers it for the review of the Logitech G305 wireless gaming mouse. Um, I don't recall if I mentioned or not, this does not have any kind of lighting or RGB on it other than the center um, little LED there for switching between the, the sensitivity modes. So if you're looking for something with a lot of RGB, this probably wouldn't be the mouse for you to go with. However, if you're looking for a good, I would say entry level gaming mouse with a lot of different options to it, I think this would be a good mouse for you. I should also uh, make a point to note as of recording this um, in October of 2019, the price on Amazon for the white mouse of this is about $58, I believe. And the one for the black or the black version of this is I think $56, if I'm recalling correctly. So fairly priced. Um, obviously, there are a lot of uh, mouse options out on the market, not only from Logitech, but from a lot of other companies that offer a lot of different features, uh, be it different weights you can put in, different ergonomics to it, and everything like that. So I hope you guys all enjoyed. All in all, I'm excited to test this out. Uh, I'll probably give an update in a couple weeks or so uh, over on Twitter on what I'm feeling with this. So if you want to know more, feel free to jump on over to Twitter. I have that link down below and uh, keep an eye out for an update on this mouse. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like down below uh, or better yet, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking on this. Let me know what you wanna see. If you wanna see that keyboard review, if you wanna see another mouse review, just let me know down below. If you wanna follow along with any more episodes that are coming out, feel free to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. It'll let you know every single time I post a new episode to the channel. But other than that, guys, thanks for sticking through till the end. I will catch you all in the next one. Thanks. Bye.